What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my Mythic Banner review featuring Arvel. So they are our new Anima Mythic unit, finally. It's been a long time and they can boost the resistance of your Anima Blessed units and also work as a 7 slot Mythic unit. Previously we only had Saros and Otter but now we have a third one and they are a colorless infantry mage. So this was kinda expected because we did get the 3 hopes banner and Arvel comes with Rite of Souls as their preferred weapon. So this weapon gives them minus on special cooldown which means that Glacis is a 3 cooldown special and at start of turn they can inflict the guard effect on any kind of foe in 3 rows or 3 columns centered on Arvel if they have less resistance than them. So its range is again kind of similar to the weapon refine of Sias and Arvis. I always kind of refer back to that because most people do have experience with that. So the range of it is definitely, you know, better than Triandra's Ruse Dance for example. But still you can try and avoid this if you're going to be tanking against Arvel. They can also get plus 5 to all of their stats and get true damage based on 20% of their resistance. And this also includes the AoE specials. So Arvel is going to be having extremely high resistance. So with this true damage they're going to be able to hit really really hard. And then finally with this weapon they can have the follow up negation effect. So overall this weapon is definitely pretty solid and also supports your team by inflicting the guard effect on the opponent. And because guard is the penalty it means that you can consistently trigger the cat skills or the skills which need any kind of penalty on the opponent. And having the guard effect on many of the opponents like tanks for example is really really good and it does have good synergy with the tempo skill which Arvel does come with. Arvel also has duality as their preferred skill. And this skill gives them flat plus 9 attack and resistance. Now this is visible attack and resistance, similar to still water. So you could I guess consider that this is essentially still water built into this exclusive skill because you need to have the visible resistance to not lose to Elamine's false start check. Um, so that's why this kind of visible resistance is definitely pretty nice. And this preferred skill can also give them weapon strangle advantage against red, blue and green opponents. So that is extremely good for tackling a lot of the safe tanks who are not colorless. Against the colorless units, Arvel doesn't really have any kind of weapon strangle advantage. And this skill can also neutralize the triangle adept effect uh, which basically means that against raven tome opponents or raven effect opponents, Arvel just has a neutral matchup. So this could be relevant if you're going to be trying to tank Arvel with a raven tome mage like Fallen Leon. Or when Nagi gets a weapon refine, she does have the Raven Breath. And it also restricts Arvel from running Triangle Adept themselves. Uh, I guess whenever it becomes a Sacred Seal or something like that. So this effect is definitely pretty nice if Nagi does become relevant after her weapon refine even more. And at sort of combat, if Arvel has got more than 25% HP, then they can get a guaranteed follow-up attack. So essentially with this weapon and this thought skill, Arvel is able to have the Omni Breaker effect which means that they can stop the follow-up attacks of the enemies and have the guaranteed follow-up themselves. And Arvel is going to be pretty slow so this is definitely pretty nice. And Arvel also has got attack resistance tempo and attack res oath 4. So the oath 4 skill is definitely pretty nice here um, for getting the visible resistance. Again visible resistance is the way that you do not lose against the resistance check of Elamine. Um, so it is going to be really helpful and this can also provide you teleportation just like attack speed oath 4. So it is always going to be helpful in ether rates defense uh, whenever your units can teleport because it can definitely catch your opponents off guard. So I hope that you now understand how Arvel can function with their base kit a bit better. Overall Arvel ends up being a bit of a hybrid mythic where they can support your team with the guard effect. Uh, with their weapon and then they can also function in the combat because of the weapon strangle advantage and also not be susceptible to Elamine's false start because as you'll see in a moment uh, Arvel actually has incredibly high resistance and we can actually see the weapon strangle advantage of Arvel in action with the green arrow and the green thief having the red arrow and we can also see this against the sword dragon Arvel has got the green arrow here and um, they are going to be triggering Glacies. So using this I can you know try and speculate these stats and from what I came up with I think that Arvel is going to be having base 43 resistance at most and at minimum I think Arvel at least has base 42 resistance and also has amazing base attack at 44. Doesn't really have very high defense at 24 and isn't really too fast with base 26 speed. So keep in mind that duality of Arvel does give them plus 9 visible resistance. So the image that I have is considering their preferred slotty skill. So Arvel actually ends up having 52 base resistance right out of the box. Which is definitely pretty amazing for 
um, your matchup against Elamine, as you'll see. And Arbel is also going to be a pretty strong nuke because keep in mind their true damage is actually applied to the AoE specials as well. So it can definitely provide them viability in like Aetherate's Chaos or in like Summoner Duels because you are going to be able to get a lot of true damage out of it. And the visible extra attack stat that you get from Duality is always helpful with that. Arvel actually functions completely well with their base kit, but if you had to change things around, then in slot B, you do have options with uh, Lull Attack Resistance or Wings of Mercy. And if you want to have a more supportive route, then I think Arvel could also take that role and run the Sabotage skills and could also be used in Arena with Mystic Boost 4 because Arvel is going to be having insanely good resistance. So their matchup against Dragons is going to be getting better by disabling that adaptive damage. And you can actually use Arvel with like three dancers as well to clear most of the in-game content because you can run an AoE build on them. Um, and when it comes to slots, I think attack resistance Oath 4 is pretty good for the teleportation and the visible resistance that you can get. And more resistance pretty much means more true damage. So that is always nice. But time pulse is also an option if you want to pre-charge a two cooldown special like Glimmer, for example, or Ruptured Sky, or if you want to have a two cooldown Iceberg. Because they do not have any kind of color advantage against colorless units, colorless feud could also be an option because Elamine is going to be common. There's also a Shara, obviously, um, so it could actually help you. And then for their Sacred Seal, I think that Phantom Resistance is pretty much the best Sacred Seal if you can give that to them. And if not, then Fury is pretty much the next best option because you need to win the Visible Resistance check in order to inflict the Guard effect on the opponent. And of course, not get fault started by Elamine. So, so those two Sacred Seals are going to be pretty important. But outside of Aetherite's defense, other Sacred Seals are definitely an option. And uh, I don't think that we can really evaluate an Anima unit without really considering their matchup against Elamine. Now, I've been saying that their resistance is pretty high, but is it high enough to really matter against Elamine? So let's take a look at that and analyze that. So Arvel is going to be ending up at like 42 base resistance, 43 base resistance, which means that if you just give them the Dragon Flowers, then an unmerged budget Arvel is going to be effectively having 63 resistance with Phantom Resistance Sacred Seal. And on the left side, you do have an optimized Elamine with like still water and again Phantom Resistance. So as you can see, a budget Arvel can actually resistance tie with Elamine and not really get false started. So Arvel is still going to be able to trigger. So Arvel is going to be able to debuff the allies of Elamine with the guard effect, which can always really help you because a lot of the tanks do not appreciate having this kind of guard effect on them. I mean, good players are going to be able to avoid this effect. Um, because it is possible, but still it is going to be a pretty annoying thing for a lot of tanks, especially if you do not really, you know, keep in mind their range or do not respect Arvel enough. And if we take a look at a bonus season Elamine, then um, bonus season Elamine can pretty much hit 67 resistance. So here, the visible resistance of attack resistance Oath 4 is actually super important because you can get the extra visible resistance to deny the resistance check. But keep in mind that on turn 1, Arvel is not going to be having the visible buff um, when the opponent is using their Elamine, so they can immediately affect Arvel with that false start. So that is something you have to watch out for. Um, so plus resistance IV is obviously going to be a pretty amazing option for Arvel if you just want to avoid Elamine. And now let's consider like an extreme case of max bonus season Elamine that can reach 71 effective resistance with Phantom Resistance and this kind of build. So Arvel, in that case, is definitely going to be having a tough time, especially if they are unmerged. So again, having plus resistance is going to be helping you and you can always run chill resistance, sacred seal or slot B skill on your team to affect Elamine and reduce their resistance so that Arvel just has a better time um, just avoiding the false start of Elamine after turn one. And you can even run the Chill Speed Resistance Secret Seal. I don't really see that many people use the dual Chill Secret Seals, but I think it's pretty good because you can like precisely affect Elamine and it could be pretty hard to avoid Elamine with that because of her high resistance and also the speed that she has got. And you can even run a Flyer School in the same lane as Arvel so that Elamine is getting debuffed. And Flyer School is actually not that bad to invest into because there are a couple of, you know, meta flying units and there's also a lot of mythic units which are flying. Um, so it does help you in that regard. So it can just help you debuff Elamine uh, even more than these skills because it can go up to minus 11 debuffs. So that is uh, also something that a lot of people do um, just to protect their team against Elamine. 
So this is pretty much an extreme case, but you can see that Arvel with some merges, some investments, some help can definitely deny Elamine consistently with their visible resistance. And Duality's extra visible resistance is definitely extremely helpful here. So there's absolutely no need of removing that. And even Oath 4 skill that they come with is going to be helping them in such matchups. Now the good thing about Arvel is that they boost the resistance of their Anima Bless units. This actually means that you can run them with Mirabilis and pretty much get plus 10 resistance on your Anima Bless units. And this means that if you run Bridal Catri a lot, which is an archetype that Elamine really kills with her false start, then you can try and run a resistance stacking Bridal Catria. This is something I actually do and I've been doing for a couple of months um, and it has actually worked out pretty well and now it's even more viable to do with Arvel giving you even more resistance. Um, so you can just run a Catria like this who's quite self-sufficient with that chill resistance with that attack res oath 4, the phantom resistance and by doing this you are basically going to be debuffing the resistance of Elamine so that they can not really trigger their false start outside of like turn 1. So only on turn 1 you're going to be susceptible and you pretty much have to, you know, make your opponent waste their actions on turn 1 by destroying their structure so that they do not try to tank on turn 1 itself. So that is something you have to do and it's definitely, you know, not, you know, very simple or very easy. But it is something that is possible and a lot of people do try to do that. Including me. I've been, <laughs> I've been doing that with my Etherade's defense anima team as well. Um, and again, you have to keep in mind that on turn 1, you're still going to be susceptible to that false start. And against Elamine, it's always good to have multiple effects in each lane uh, so that the Elamine player at least has the dilemma of which, you know, lane they should be trying to false start. Because if you just give them one option with Bradle Catria, then they're obviously going to be just false starting that lane. So giving them multiple options uh, does mean that the prioritization on the Elamine player should be good. And if you're going to be running Bridal Catria with Arvel, then you should be giving the Phantom Resistance to Catria because Catria, in my opinion, does have a more important effect than Arvel at the very least because it is going to be helping you tank bust with that Brave Attacks. Um, so Arvel could just have the Fury Sacred Seal and Bridal Catria could have the Phantom Resistance. So I really wanted to go over how Arvel can change things in the Anima defense. I mean, it's not going to be a big change. Elamine is still the boogeyman of uh, Anima and Astro Season, so that is still there. But at least like Arvel can help you resistance stack a bit better and it's not susceptible themselves to Elamine. So that is at least one positive compared to someone like Oter, who's just going to get his Brutal Shell denied with false start. Um, so that is the silver lining of Arvel basically and why uh, they are a really good Anima Mythic. But do not think that you're going to be winning against Elamine teams or, you know, against a lot of the teams in the Anima season just by having Arvel. They are good, but they are not that good that uh, Anima season becomes better or Anima season actually improves in terms of its defects uh, with how, you know, Elamine completely destroyed it with that false start. Just like a lot of mages, Arvel also has the problem of getting walled by armors with Hardy Fighter and Deflect Magic. So mages do not really have any kind of special that can pierce through the damage reduction of something like Deflect Magic, for example. Um, so there, it is always going to be troublesome. And against a lot of the far safe tanks, uh, Arvel is going to be dying. There's uh, no sugarcoating that. And Arvel is also going to be susceptible to null follow-up effect because Arvel is quite slow. So the Omni Breaker effect is not going to be a thing against the null follow-up Sacred Seal, which is going to be pretty common. And null follow-up as an effect is a lot more common now. So those are going to be the shortcomings of Arvel. And people can also dodge the guard effect of Arvel with their safe tanks because you can pretty much park your safe tank outside of the range of that. Um, you can always do that against Yune as well, against Triandra when you read the AI. Um, so that is possible to do and you can just have the guard effect fall on units like Plumeria and Elamine and not really care about it. So your main safe tanks are not going to be affected by it as such. So Arvel does have their shortcomings, but still um, with how starved we have been in the Anima season, Arvel is definitely a bit of crumb, if you will. And against many of the far safe tanks, if they're running Dragon Wall, Arvel can definitely try and close the gap between the damage reduction that they get because of uh, Arvel Tide resistance. And Arvel Tide resistance can also help them against Duma, for example, because Duma does have the resistance check for the decharging in his weapon. Um, so that's something you have to watch out for as well if you're going to be facing Arvel. And if you don't really care about using Arvel, then they do have pretty good fodder in Attack Res Tempo and Attack Resistance Oath 4. So this could easily be given to any kind of 
like mage and the teleportation effect is so good as well as the extra offenses and the extra resistance is always going to be helping you if you run you know things like iceberg or any kind of skills that do use your resistance so it is always going to be pretty nice so their fodder and their usage is both pretty good so let's go over my anima mythic tier list i am consistently in vault of heaven in tier 39 and top 3k always so it is pretty much from my experience of using these units um and i do try and swap out the mythics depending on the team and depending on the bonus so i have used all of them um and keep in mind that the anima mythics are not going to be as stacked as light mythics or astro mythics Arvel by far is the best anima defense mythic in my opinion because they can open up the seventh slot, give you the resistance, and they're not going to be melee unit like Seros or getting shut down by false start like um, Ultra for example. So even on a budget build, like Arvel can function pretty well, and you can even run them with like Time Pulse and Iceberg if you do run them with a Bradle Catcher team, and even a support role is something that Arvel can do. In my opinion, Arvel is pretty much the best Summoner Duels Anima Mythic because all of the other Anima Mythics don't really do that good of a job in that game mode. But at the very least, like uh, Arvel can function with an AoE build and can actually provide the guard effect, which can be pretty annoying for the opponent, depending on the Summoner Duels map. So you can actually try and use them there as an AoE mage because the true damage from their weapon does get added into the AoE special. They can even run the Sabotage skill and pretty much function with that. And because they're an infantry mage, it shouldn't be that hard to pre-charge their special with like some infantry pulse, Asker, the Duochrome and all of that jazz. So it is not the hardest to use them in summoner duels. And now follow up Sacred Seal is going to be pretty nice to have in something like Arena. Uh, where a lot of the effects can be annoying. And then Mirabilis, I would say, is also a tier 1 Anima Mythic unit because Mirabilis is a dancer and can also provide you with the extra resistance, which is always nice for avoiding false start of Elamine. And Mirabilis doubles down as your dancer while being a Mythic unit. So it's pretty good and it's not really all that hard to slot in Mirabilis into your team. And Mirabilis is also a melee dancer unlike Triandra, so she's not really all that easily baitable. Um, so at least she can provide you the dance support consistently. And she can also debuff the opponent with her whimsical dream. And she can also provide the ground order support. Can have access to stuff like aerobatics, the teleportation skill. And she's also going to be having access to odd tempest. So that's something you can actually run to extend her movement. Um, and could be used for some dancer trap teams. And like at high investment, you can even make Mirabilis so that she can kill Regan and like um, Plumeria. Um, so Sturdy Impact is something that she can run because she can actually be bulky enough to survive. And in Arena, if you do max invest into her, then obviously a Dancer is going to be pretty nice. She's not going to be as high scoring as like Duopini or anything like that. Uh, it's just 180 BST scoring, but still it's uh, definitely pretty helpful to make your Arena matches easier. In Tier 2, I would put the other 7 slot Mythics in Ultra and Saros. So being able to open up the 7th slot automatically gives you uh, more value compared to the other mythics because at least you're going to be able to have an extra unit on your defense. So that can actually help your team with the offensive power. Um, but Arvel is just a better 7th slot mythic and that's why they are in tier 1. And these two are in tier 2. Now as you guys know, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Ultra. I do use him quite a lot. And in my opinion, he's not the best in Aetherate's defense because his Brutal Shell just gets shut down by false start, so that always makes me sad. And even if you run him with like Flow Guard with the Slaying Hammer um, against a lot of the near safe tanks, the safe tanking armors can pretty much stack up enough bulk that they will not be dying to Brutal Shell, uh, even with that effective damage. So the support part is definitely skewed towards the player uh, when it comes to Aetherate's uh, as a whole. So Ultra can have trouble killing a lot of the... But Sling Hammer does make it a bit better with the effective damage and getting the nullification on their buffs. And you also do not have Kanto as an annoying thing here. Um, so I do run Sling Hammer actually and it's an option. But I feel like Odor is pretty much best used in Summoner Duels S uh, because of having Kanto in his weapon and being able to run hit and run. So even if you get Kanto controlled, you can still retreat two spaces back. And Brutal Shell is definitely going to be pretty amazing against many of the frontliners. And you can also Pulse Smoke down um, the entire team of the opponent if they're running pre-charge specials. And because Otter does have the bulk, he can actually survive the hits of the opponents unlike Regan. Um, so if you stack up defense on him, then he can try and Pulse Smoke them down and then retreat with Hit and Run and his Kanto. 
which is always really good. And whenever Turmoil is a skill, you can always boost up his movement um, and pretty much hit and run with the Kanto. So it's definitely pretty fun. And he could be used in Arena as well. Seros was the first 7 slot anima mythic and uh, she has done an okay job I would say. Her preferred skill in Wings of Light isn't really all that impressive compared to the other exclusive skills. So she can always try and replace that with something else that can support her teammates. Um, and she can even run Kanto Control and pretty much pretend to be Medius of the <laughs> anima season even though she's not that. And at least Aurora Breath does give you the auto follow up in the player phase and has got follow up negation in the enemy phase. So she is going to be bulkier than Oter. Uh, when it comes to being a unit, but she is a melee range unit, so does not really have the threat range of someone like Arvel, for example. And obviously her support capabilities are not really as good as the tier 1 mythic units. With the new distant counter sacred seal, she can actually score as the highest anima mythic unit in the Colosseum game modes. Um, so that is something worth noting with the tier 4 slot B skills. In tier 3, I would put Duma and Thrasir. So Duma did get a pretty nice weapon refine and remix in my opinion, but still, he's an armor unit at the end of the day, so he does have his limitations. And um, he can definitely be run as a Anima Mythic, giving you the extra attack. And the upheaval's damage and the fact that he can destroy structures is definitely pretty good. But keep in mind that you're going to be susceptible to Elamine um, unless you invest into a hyper anti-Elamine build that can work in the bonus season or something like that so that is always possible uh, but I usually just use him with Wings of Mercy and he can even be used with far save if you want to so in his bonus season he's gonna be extremely tanky and he's actually not gonna be dying that easily so you can run him as a far save unit while also working as your mythic so that is a role that he can do at max investment um, for sure and much better because you're gonna be having the bulk from the merges and in summoner duels you could also use him with arcane grima that we have got uh, which can just give you the auto follow up which is something duma is missing and because you're not going to be using upheaval when you're running far save the trade-off isn't really all that big so you can easily try and run that and then because we're not running upheaval then you can just get distant defense 4 to ignore the visible buffs of the opponent duma does have the attack check with the fell breath so that is something you have to keep in mind um but if you're not running that weapon you don't really need to care about that the Rasir definitely got a bit of help with the Null Follow-Up Sacred Seal that we have got. And Null Follow-Up as an effect is a lot easier to get with like Brave Chroms, Infantry Speed Tactic, or like Ascended Celica and Gregor bringing the Infantry Null Follow-Up. So with that, Thrasir can definitely, you know, overcome the follow-up negation effects, which could stop her before. But still the save tanks are just so tanky that a lot of times she's not going to be able to kill them. Of course, there is the existence of Ascended Adun and the Dragon Far Saviors, so her effective damage could actually help her, but still, in my opinion, she does need the Weapon Refine so that she can function even better as a nuke. She definitely has the most amount of potential to rise up in the tiers because of being a ranged unit, uh, but still, she's not going to be providing you any kind of support like Arvel does. And then, in the final tier, we do have Lyft. Um, I don't think I need to really explain this, but <laughs> Liv just is too honest. In Aetherite's defense, you need some kind of degenerate stuff to function as a really good mythic. You need to be like Medius, Note, Arvel, or be a dancer like Mirabilis. Unfortunately, Liv is none of those things, and um, Liv just does not function too well as a melee mythic. He doesn't really provide you any kind of support. I mean, you could build him up for that uh, with Allied Sword and, you know, stuff, but it's still not the most ideal thing, and... Like, Aetherite's defense is pretty much not his game mode unless they give him a good remix or refine. So in my opinion, he's pretty much the Sothis of the anima season. Um, but I hope that he doesn't get the Sothis treatment and actually get something good. He can also function in like other game modes like Summoner Duels for example. Um, and if you have him at max investment, then he could function with Might of Myriads, which is a captain skill. And in Arena, he could also function, but he's not exactly going to be a high-scoring unit. And there are definitely other units who can also do that kind of, you know, raid boss role uh, in Summoner Duels. So that is going to be my Anima Mythic tier list. Not the hardest tier list to make because um, there's definitely a gap between the viability of many of these Mythics. And Arvel being a new unit definitely stands above them. And Mirabilis being a dancer, so there's a clear gap there. And there's, of course, Ultra and Saros with the 7th slot. And then the older Mythics, which do have their shortcomings. But Lyft and Thrasir are going to be getting their remixes and refines next year. And we already know that Thrasir's remix is going to be in February. And like I said, I'm definitely looking forward to it because she can get better. Lyft's remix is going to be a bit after. So he'll have to wait a few more months to hopefully become better. 
Overall, this banner has got amazing color sharing value in the colorless pool because you've got strong mythics like Arvel, Elamine, and Asker, which are really versatile. And in the red and blue pool, a lot of people might find them lackluster depending on your needs. Green also has decent mages, but they are weak to null follow up. Letizia and E3 are popular as units, so people are going to be trying to get them. And if you're really trying to get the mythic merges, then red pool and the colorless pool might be for you because you can try and get the Astra merges for Plumeria and Anima merges for Mirabilis. But if you don't really care, then you can ignore the red pool and just focus on colorless because it does have really good value. So ninja theme is probably going to get booted like the pirate theme, I would suppose. So maybe we could have a new seasonal theme and Legendary Eliwood and Yune are going to be getting their remix banner next month. They're also getting their refines next month. So that is something you can look forward to if you want to spark them. Ascended Edun banner is going to be getting its Forging Bonds rerun and Ascended Edun is one of the best far save units in the game and because we have seen in two months we've got two rearmed heroes we could probably get another rearmed hero and then another Ascended hero like maybe Ascended Veronica or Ascended Bruno because Ascended Veronica is now um, you know, in the game essentially with her red tome. November could also have a double special hero banner and it could actually be really stacked with you know, units like Summer Thor, Summer Edelgard, Summer Dimitri. So those are going to be the units which a lot of people are going to be wanting to have because they're really strong and they're also fan favorites. So that is something that could also potentially happen next month, which I wanted to give a heads up for. And the reason why I said that Embla could happen next month is because uh, we do have the space of two red units next month. And it would be in the line of uh, Asker and Ash both being colorless and then Embla and Elm both being red. So it could happen, we don't really get the red mythic or legendary units that often and with the space of two double OCs there it could happen and it has happened before with like Thor and Eitri color sharing and then before that Freya and Triandra color sharing in the green color. So it could happen this time with Emla and Elm as the double OCs as we have seen that happen in the previous years as well so I'm just going off that pattern. So overall it is going to be you know in terms of unit strength a bit better than this month's mythic banner. And if you really care about getting Embla, then you could try and save or any of these units. With Embla and Elm being there, I think one of them could be a legendary unit and the other one could be Mythic, similar to how Thor and Eitri turned up to be. Like Eitri ended up becoming a fire legend unit. So one of them could end up becoming a wind legendary unit. And they have been slowing down on the Mythic units, if you haven't really noticed. We get a lot more legendary banners than we get the Mythic banners. So that's why I think that one of them is probably going to be a legendary unit. So yeah, that is my prediction for the next month. And I uh, hope this info has been helpful to you in making your decision. And now let's take a look at the other units from this banner as well. Asker is just amazing as a color sharing unit because he's top tier in ether raids and also in summoner duels and such a useful unit because not only he's really good in the combat but he can also work as a support unit because of open domain and he can easily be used in any kind of team because of providing resonant shields and resonant blades effect and also the minus one special cooldown. So you could use him with a tanking team or with the guild force team. You guys have seen me use him so much. And uh, even in summoner duels, he can work as a really good frontliner and even tank like the meta threats because of his true damage reduction. And true damage reduction means that it's not pierceable by Deadeye or Lethality. So that is always good. And he can also be used in the Aetherate's Chaos Season on like Aetherate's defense because the blessings don't really matter. So he's truly a top tier and versatile unit. And his fodder is also good so you can get the ideal 4 and the bulwark skill at the same time. Elamine is the reason why Astra and Anima season is, it is what it is and Arvel is not really going to be changing too much drastically because Arvel themselves is just immune to Elamine and can help Bridal Catria but that is not going to be on every team so Elamine still has a lot of utility with that false start being able to shut down so many skills like uh, Bridal Catria's effect, Hardy Fighter, Brutal Shell. Not to mention Holy Ground also provides you the damage reduction. So she is one of the best allies you can have for a safe tanking team. And even if you use her in like summoner duels where false star is not all that relevant, you can always just switch out her weapon for Tan and Baton and give Drive Guard. So she is going to be a really solid unit for any kind of content and any kind of like tank, especially in either raids being a game changer for the Astro season and making it a lot easier to save tank 
especially with the top tier saves that we have got now like Duo Duma and then Rion Grima so she's truly just absolutely insane but unfortunately her fodder is not really all that insane because she mainly provides the Fodtray skill and the push skill is really outclassed as a slaughter option and Nudge Plus is also decent but usually healers would want Return or Rescue as the retreat option so the Fodtray skill is the main premium skill. Letizia is a bulky green mage cavalier who can get a bunch of debuffs with her weapon and she can also get the auto follow up so that is going to be helpful because of her low speed but unfortunately because she's so slow she's always going to get annoyed by follow up negation effects, null follow up and any kind of good far safe tank is going to be able to stop her in her tracks but still she could function as a threatening unit being a mage cavalier having a high threat range and her fodder is decent with the fodtray skill and attack resistance catch so you can get the version 3 of the cat skill from halloween naga and then just inherit the version 4 and the trace skill at the same time rao skill is also i guess nice but it's not really as good as the oath 4 skills and rao skills can be annoying with its positional needs Itri is an amazing flying mage and she is easily the best green unit out of this pool on the banner and her flying mobility is just absolutely amazing and the fact that she has got Kanto 2 built into her weapon is so good. She's also deceptively bulky because of the damage reduction that she can get so she can function really well in arena because of the mobility that she has as a flyer and when it comes to summoner duels a lot has definitely changed we have a lot of far safe tanks which can stop her inner tracks and there's also canter control which can stop her mobility but still on a bridal catcher team she can definitely hit hard and actually be a pretty annoying unit for some of the far safe tanks because she can actually survive their counter attack uh, by running stuff like sturdy impact and then pulse smoking down their pre-charge specials and in Aether Rage, she could always be used for hit and run, but again, Kanto Control is going to be a bit annoying. And like most of the mages, she is going to be having problem breaking through a lot of hardy fighter armors, which are going to be stopping her auto follow up. And her fodder is not really all that impressive. The solo four skills are not really as good, and the rain is going to be the main skill that you could get out of her. I've already went over Ocher in my tier list so not gonna be repeating a whole bunch of it but basically he can function as a decent 7 slot mythic um, and can also function well in Summoner Duel's S. Definitely much better than Aether Raid's defense and his fodder is not gonna be as insane because we already have units in the real pool who can score more than 180 BST unless you really want to use an older green cavalier like Cecilia or Wallhart in arena. And Flow Refresh is not going to be as good and desirable as Flow Guard, but still it could be a decent player phase option. And Attack Defense Menace is going to be an option for a lot of slower units, especially if they are Cavaliers. So his fodder is going to be pretty decent. Sane is a pretty unique Lance Cavalier because he can get another action after using a Rally Assist skill with his weapon. And he can also buff himself up and has got Near Trace built into his weapon. So he can just use a flow skill like he does with flow refresh or even use head and run just for retreating a bit. But the problem for Sane is that we just got another Lance Cavalier who can get another action with his assist and that is Brave Chrome. Now Sane is going to be hitting pretty hard and can function as a Gale Force unit. But ultimately Brave Chrome is going to be able to use his assist to just reposition an ally for free and then copy all of their status and actually get a lot of stats in combat and can also function uniquely by copying like an extra movement. And Brave Chrome is going to be faster than Sane so he is just going to be having much more opportunity to double and get on the kills. So Sane does face competition from him but if he's a favorite of yours then he can definitely function as Gale Force Cavalier or function well in the player phase with something like Sir Sparrow and by simply using a flow skill. You can also fodder him I guess for Rally Up Attack Plus or for Flow Refresh. Speed Defense Catch 4 is not that desirable skill so his fodder is not the greatest and like I said Flow Refresh is not going to be as desirable as Flow Guard but still a good function if you really want to have that effect in the player phase. Shadows of Valentia Est, just like Sane, does have the Near Trace skill built into her weapon, so her sloppy skill is rather open to run a flow skill like Flow Feather or even run Pegasus Flight at higher investment. And now Pegasus Flight is definitely easily available with Fila being in the normal summoning pool. Her weapon does provide her with the damage reduction and also uh, true damage, so she can definitely hit hard. Uh, but she's really not going to be standing out much despite this weapon and Flow Feather is a useful skill but and Flow Feather is a nice player phase skill but not many units can meet the resistance check and the speed check of it reliably like Est so it is definitely going to be a pretty niche fodder. 
Legend Chrom is not in his peak days because we do have Duo Chrom who can just give the support better, but still he can function in Arena as a pretty amazing unit just because of having two change fate. And keep in mind that Legendary Chrome is actually gonna get added into the remix banners next year. So it is a lot easier to spark him there. And he's also gonna be getting a remix and refine next year. So he's gonna be getting much better next year, which is quite promising for the Legendary Chrome users. And he's easily one of the best Legendary units you can invest into because of him providing you the assist skill, which is so valuable for arena usage. And he can also use the tier four slot B skills and actually score pretty decently well. Um, for an older Water Legend unit. And of course at max investment, a lot of people do use him with the speedy build. And now he has also got access to attack speed finish 4 and the Oath 4 skill. And he can also function well in Summoner Duels S actually with counter control. He's not gonna be like a duo Chrom, uh, but still he could provide you with another action at least. And his fodder is not gonna be as impressive right now because not many ranged units want to have close counter. You can just use the save units for tanking and mages and ranged units in general are much better specialized for taking on the ranged matchups. And lull attack defense is pretty much the skill and lull attack defense is the only skill that he's gonna be giving you and that is already available in the divine code section. Plumeria is absolutely amazing as an Astra Mythic unit because of being a dancer and it can never be understated how good it is to have a Mythic unit be your dancer. Now she's no peony providing you the orders buff or anything like that but still she's gonna be pretty useful as a Mythic dancer and definitely one of the better units to invest into with your merges for the Astra season. And she can also function as a support unit because of her high resistance so she can easily run the sabotage skills with the phantom resistance and provide support to your team. As for the fodder, it's nothing really too insane. Sabotage speed is still not available in the real pool but I think it is going to be at some point because we already have the sabotage attack and resistance version available. So the rain skill is going to be the most useful skill that she can provide to you. This banner surely has a lot of anima mythics if you're trying to finish that collection. So Mirabilis is also a pretty good unit and she definitely has options with her weapon, um, especially with some really good inheritable weapons that we have right now. So Zenbato Sword is actually pretty helpful for killing Regans if they tr just try and leave her in the range of Mirabilis. Coral Sword can provide you the guaranteed follow up attack and Flame Gunpai that we do have from Flame Rinka can give you more debuffs in the combat which can help you in survival. When it comes to the fodder, it is kind of the similar case as Plumeria where she does have the sabotage skill that is not easily available. So the most valuable skill is going to be Fortress Defense Rest 3 which she can provide. And this skill is usually only going to be needed if you want to have a visible resistance or visible defense check. And even in that case like still water and solid ground are just going to be better skills to maximize that stat. Lif is the final unit present on this banner and I pretty much just use him as a Wings of Mercy unit in Aether Raid's defense and that is the extent of it but he is going to be getting better um, with the refine and remix hopefully that he can get next year and his fodder is useful with distant counter and time pulse being pretty universally useful skills. We do have better distant counters now in distant ferocity, distant dart and distant stance. Uh, but still you do need the base distant counter for that and for inheriting another premium skill on top of it. So it could help you as a prerequisite skill and time pulse is going to be pretty useful for any kind of weapon that has minus and special cooldown for pre-charging a two cooldown special like Vital Astra or Ruptured Skies. So it is going to be a pretty good skill. So he does provide you with some good fodder but he himself is not really going to be doing too much right now. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to share this with your friends who are trying to summon on this banner. And if you did, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me a lot. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support my work directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member as well. And for more Fae analysis videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Raven Tomes against Arvel. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.